Hello everyone and welcome to another Void Dwarf Studios video where today I do a much requested one which I've been meaning to get around to. There's so many videos I've been meaning to get around to but it's just been oy vey, so much going on in my life right now. Anyway, uh, cut a long story short, I had a couple of people asking me how I did the beards for the Fire Slayers for my Fire Slayer army. So I figured this would be a perfect time considering I now have another. This makes number three. Yeah, number three. This makes number three Fire Slayer start collecting box that I own. And I figure, perfect time to talk about painting beards. And painting Fire Slayers. So why don't we do both of those at the same time? So, we have our built and completed Fire Slayer. Yes, I've got camera technology now. I can use both hands! <laughs> so, we'll see if you guys like the video this way. Anyway, so I'm still getting used to how you do this. So, I've glued them together, partially just for speed, but also because, well, it's nice to have, uh, still trying to get camera and focus. Um, yeah, basically for speed, but also it's nice to have the model so I roughly know what direction he's looking in, so I can change the other models to, to suit as needs be. So, first up, good old Corax White. So, as you can see, I have slapped on a good layer of Ceramite White, just to cover the model. I tend to prefer Ceramite White over Black for uh, anything with fire involved, or bright colours. Black tends to be, well, Black Templars, it's just more straightforward. Or, uh, excuse me, burped a couple times there, hence the camera jogging. Um, yeah, Black I tend to use more on darker shades, tones, that kind of thing. But with these Fire Slayers, I like them to be bright and colourful. And that's why most of my models, honestly, are painted white first, because I like them to be bright and colourful. So, let's start off with some skin, shall we? And that's going to be needing some Bugman Glow. And put some water on your brush. I'm probably teach telling you how to suck eggs at this point, but most of you will have at least some idea how to paint and all that jazz. I think that's why originally when I made these videos, I made them so that they were like more like photos into the painting process than actually uh, painting them as I go. And this is the first time I've tried painting on a camera before, so pardon me if uh, this looks a bit strange. But um, as you can see, just essentially put a thin layer of paint on, just enough to actually cover the skin. And I will always find it's way easier to just do the larger layer areas first before you go on to any of the smaller bits. And then you can just go over the larger areas later, as well as the smaller areas if you accidentally go over something you didn't mean to. And we will... But I think I personally am getting a little bored with this, so I will cut back in a sec. And there we go. <laughs> Quick time cut for you there, everyone. So yeah, Bugman's Glow all over the skin. And we will come back to that later. Now for a bit of beard work. And for that, stay. We shall start off with Jakara Orange. And this will be the base coat for the beard. And it's pretty straightforward, honestly. It's The, uh, the technique for the beard is basically just a base coat followed by some layers and couple washes. It's not too hard. If I can do it, anyone can do it. And frankly, I'm only an okay painter, in my personal opinion. I've been doing this for ages, but I'm only okay at it. That's what I'm going to say. Right, I'm going to bring you up to the camera. There we go. Get your face all bearded up. Now obviously, Fire Slayers can have all kinds of different coloured beards. It doesn't have to be all fiery and stuff. I just quite like that classic look. Oh, camera. Apologies. I quite like that classic... Bleh. Apparently I've not had enough coffee. I quite like the classic look of the uh, fiery dwarven beard from the front cover of the army book. Uh, don't worry too much if you get anything on the other colours. You can always go back over them later. Paint, on the whole, is fairly forgiving. It's really once you get to the uh, final stages that you start experiencing any problems. So, there you go. 
Pretty straightforward, really. Wait for that to dry. Obviously, I'd recommend you do under the beard, too. Get a bit more paint on there. And uh, we will then also do the crest. And we'll cut back to that in a moment. And you'll have something that looks like this. Again, it's all pretty straightforward, people. Anyone can do this. And honestly, this is one of the things I do love about the hobby. Yeah, don't, don't mind about those. We're going to be painting over the uh, gauntlets in a minute. But yeah, this is what I love about the hobby. Like, anyone can do this. It's just... All it takes is a bit of patience, some practice, and... Yeah, you can get your models looking pretty damn decent pretty fast. And uh, speaking of decent, we're missing an awful lot of bling. So, let us have some Retributor Gold to fix that. Again, do this however you want, but I would suggest using a small to medium sized brush and basically I'm going to go over all the bits of armour and I'm going to... it's really windy outside. Yeah, so I'm going to go all the bits of armour, including the helmet. Like I said, this is why you don't have to worry too much about painting things if you do it in a particular order because well, you're just going to paint over it anyway, and that means that any mistakes you've made, you can quite easily fix that or cover up. It's only really when you get to the last stages that you have to be a little bit more careful with your brush, and that's all about having steady hands, patience, and uh, some quiet time. Oh, I won't lie, quiet time is quite important. And I've often wondered to myself whether painting should be a form of therapy, you know? People are so much more chilled once they've started painting something. Have you guys found this? Do you find that if you haven't painted in a while that you start getting a bit tetchy or you, uh, you know, you, you really long for it? Oh, my brushes. Yeah, try and look after your brushes. They have a tendency to split after a while. And the only way I've really found to reduce this problem is by when I put the paint onto the brush, it's twisted, tw you twist the brush in the opposite direction, which then brings the point back. Because if your brush is missing the point, then, well, it, it just makes it so much harder to paint things more accurately. Loving the little dragony magma drop motif on them. It's pretty damn neat. Can't wait to move into our new home and have the studio all set up so it's easier to do this kind of stuff. It'd be amazing to do this kind of thing on a regular basis. But uh, I will need everyone's help for that. Put some gold on your snout. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more gold around the beardy bit here. On his armbands. And, no, I think I'll leave that silver. So yeah, basically I'll add gold to the rest and then I'll be right back. And there we go, people. Looking a bit more bling. That's more like it, isn't it? I have also painted the runes, the uh, Urgold runes that they hammer into their bodies. Yeah, you're going to need a really thin brush, plenty of patience, and uh, hope for the best, really. But yeah, so I've painted those, because they're going to shine out later, and you'll wait and see. So, I think we need some silver now. Excuse me, whilst I make suitable rummaging noises in my box, whilst I try and find the correct colour. Oh, I've got dryads here. I should get round to painting them at some point. Um... Oh, and a spirit. Was it? Not a spirit host. What is that? Oh, anyway. Um, so, we are going to use, if I eventually find it. Yeah. So, we're going to use a combination of paints. First up, we're going to use Lead Belcher, which will be the base, and it's going to be for where the darker metals are going to be. And then for the edges, we're going to use Runefang Steel. I'm not entirely sure. Sorry, that's Katie Hare, one of the Cocker Spaniels. Um, we're going to use Runefang Steel, which will be for the edges, to give it more of a sharper look. You can use a slightly bigger brush now, because the axes are actually pretty big. Don't worry, people, I will get to the fiery bit. Just uh, give me time. I will get there, I promise. I strongly recommend to all new painters... I wonder if this is thick enough. Well, we'll find out in a minute. I strongly recommend to all new painters that you pace yourselves when you have armies of multiple of the same kind of thing, because you're going to suffer what is commonly known as burnout, hobby burnout. 
and hobby burnout sucks because you can then end up with dozens and dozens and dozens of potential models to paint sometimes hundreds especially if you're a poor skaven player or a night horn player my poor partner tanya she's got so many models to paint and sometimes it can feel a bit of a, a mountain to get through but the main thing is to pace yourself to give you something nice to do every now and again something different it's partly why i've got my uh for a future video something very different from my normal fire slayers yeah anyway out you go um yeah so variety is the spice of life as they say so make sure you mix it up a bit make sure you take plenty of breaks drink coffee or tea and juice <laughs> you know do whatever you need to do to relax and then get back in the swing of things so yeah that's the beginnings of what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be painting both the axe and the handle metal because I figure fire slayers, metal, metal everywhere. I'm going to do the other axe and I'll do his little ponytail ringlet thing and we'll be back in a minute. And there we go everyone. So that's the lead belcher. I've done it on some of the uh, belt straps as well, on the little discs. I've also done it on the... Uh, little tassel things on the back. So I've painted this all lead belcher purely because it's just, for me it's easier. I find this much quicker to do and when you have potentially 30, 40 models that are all fire slayers, yeah, you, you try and find ways to speed up the process however you can. Hmm, maybe not rune thing. There's something wrong with that paint. I need to do something about that. So let us try, I know you're here. Ah, this is what I was originally looking for. So, silver storm host camera. So yeah, it's a much thicker paint, which makes things a hell of a lot easier. So the idea is, when you come to doing your washes on these blades, it will give you more of a contrast between the lead belcher and the sorry, contrast between the lead belcher and the metal itself. So like that. Again, a pretty straightforward technique. Also, it's fantastic for like edge highlighting. Um, for those who don't quite understand what that means, basically you just gently brush the brush over the edges of more raised surfaces. Let's quickly do it on this side as well. So it just kind of gives it a little extra shine, you know? So I'm going to do the same with the other axe. I realise I'm sounding a bit like a broken record here, but like I say, it's this isn't hard. Right, and with this one I'm just going to... Sorry, camera. So yeah, I've gone along the edges here, and I will quickly brush over the top of these as well. So, we are now getting on to the bit you've been waiting for all this time. Uh, yes, I did put some gold on the axe, I, I couldn't resist. I, I, I couldn't resist the bling. But you can see what I mean about the uh, Stormhost Silver, just gives it a bit more of a brighter edge. Like I said, we're now getting on to the beard, so, first up... We're going to do some Fire Dragon Bright, followed by some Uriel Yellow, and then it's the washes. So, thin brush, relatively thin brush, and with the Fire Dragon Orange, if I can get it open, apologies, put a little bit on the edge, like just the tip, if you can see that. I know that it's hard to focus on a paintbrush, but uh, just the tip, because what we are going to do now is, uh, you see where the high areas are? Let's get these paints out of the way. Focus camera, thank you. Right, so you see where the high areas are, where the beard line is in the mould, for uh, the plastic mould? We are going to gently brush on top of those. Just gently, gently, gently. Now, as you can see, don't worry too much if it uh, does end up in the mall. Got a little bit on his nose. There we go. Don't worry too much if some of this stuff ends up in the uh, crevices, because that will be all be taken care of later. This is more or less a dry brushing technique. 
Well, I mean, that's exactly what it is, really. I need a tiny, tiny bit more. Like... Really, there are two ways you can do this. Either you dry brush, which is where I'm sort of giving up and decided to do, or you can do what's called edge highlighting, which is where you basically just paint the very tips. It's a bit more of a controlled method, but frankly, dry brushing will suit your purposes fairly well as well. So it's just a very light, very light brushing over the top. This might be a bit tricky to see in the camera, but you can sort of see there's now slightly different shades of orange, which is good, which is what we want. Because now we're going to do the same thing on that lovely little crest he has. Maybe a tiny bit too much there, but let's see how that goes. Yeah, it's a tiny bit too much, but... So I think the thing to point out is you're not trying to paint over the top of everything you've just previously done. You are literally just trying to go for all the raised bits. And that will make sense later, I promise. A little bit on the ponytail thing. You kind of just flick it away. Get rid of all the excess. All right, now that you've done that, you're going to get a little bit of yellow, the uh, Uriel yellow you had earlier. And essentially, you're going to do the same thing again. Just brush. Ooh, a little too much. Just brush it over the top. So you get that kind of effect. You'll find it easiest, if you're trying to do this technique, to brush sort of against the grain, if that makes sense. It's because you're trying to just get it more or less on the top layer. So you're trying to avoid it going too deep into the crevices. Obviously if you have a if you use a dry brush it's easier, but I I personally find this quicker, especially as we're doing this for a tutorial. So, but you can see what I'm trying to say, I hope, that you're not trying to fill in everything, because you're not trying to paint over what you've previously done. Well, you are, but what I'm trying to say is that you're not trying to fill out everything you've previously done. You still want those oranges to shine through. Because you're then going to start wanting to wash this bugger. Uh, before we wash him, however, we are going to paint that belt. Make sure you dry your brush thoroughly. Brush care is important, kids. Kids. Based on what I found out on my ch channel's analytics, most of the people who watch me are like in their 20s and 30s, so calling you kids is a bit a bit much. Um, so yeah, Mournfang Brown. Just on the leather skirty bit. Trying not to paint over the rune. But acknowledging if it does happen, you just have to paint over the, the rune again. Really, it would have been better if I'd painted the uh, Mourn Fang first. Because then that would have uh, saved an awful lot of time and effort. And this is the only problem with assembling a model. you now got to try and paint around what you've already painted. That worked out relatively well. 
pain in his butt. Now, a little bit on the back. And there you have it. See how much better that is? You've gotten rid of some of the uh, excess paint that was there. Of course, you could always just add a little bit more on top. Gently, gently, gently. And you're done. So. Eventually I'll get to the eyeballs. But um, before we go much further, Fire Slayer axes have these wonderful little brazier things inside them. Which, God only knows how that actually works in reality. It, I, I really don't think it will. But, um, yeah, so what I'll do with them, is I'll fill them up with Yariel Yellow, and because I don't want to bore you by making constant mistakes as I try and not paint over all the metal, I'm going to pause this video and come back. Okay, so this is the point we're at now. As you can see, if I gently turn them all around, I've put little dots of the uh, Uriel Yellow inside the braziers. On both of them. Little, little yellow dots. And now we're going to start thinking about washing. Because that's going to make this hair look nice and fiery. So, I reach into my bag of well, a box of paint. Have I got enough left? Should have enough left for this tutorial. I use this stuff a lot. So, this is the secret, people. Cassandra Yellow. I love this stuff. It is absolutely perfect for what I have in mind. So, you get a nice healthy dollop on your dollop. <laughs> you get a nice healthy amount on your brush. And Here's what you do. It's so nice and simple. Just add it to the beard. Look at that. Look how good that looks. Add some to the hair. You will need a fairly healthy amount on your brush. So you've got to get into all the recesses. Because that's basically what these wash type paints are for. They're to get into the recesses and also they react with the other colours to bring them out. So Cassandra Yellow works perfectly alongside yellows and oranges and reds. And it just brings out that colour so much nicer. Does it not? Does that not look so much better? Now you'll have to wait for it to dry. The fun thing is, I actually put this Cassandra yellow stuff on top of the gold as well. And we're going to need to put it on the fiery bits. So let's put some on there now so you can see what it looks like. So, let's start with the axe. Bit too much on that side. So I'll just have to transfer that across later. So the skin I will wash a different colour. I quite like how it looks, honestly. There's no other no other real reason for that. And uh, yeah, that's the other thing, because it does bring out golds really, really well. just makes them pop out a bit more. Get on his chest. Get 
anything golden, anything metallic, that's what I uh, put this wash on. We'll get to the uh, flesh last, don't worry about that, because then we've got to do eyeballs. And there you have it. How's that? That's not half bad, is it? Just need to do a little flesh wash. Now, you can put what is called Cadian or a lighter shade of fleshy colours to bring out a bit more contrast on the, the skin. So I tend to use a little bit of Cadian flesh. Ooh, come on camera, there we go. But uh, let's wait for the Let's wait for the miniature to dry first. All right then, now that that's dried a bit, let's finally tackle that skin. And uh, then that will be nearing the end of this process because then we've only got the eyes after that. So, Yep, I'm going to put a little layer on, because why not? So, when you're dealing with skin, I tend to find that you're really just trying to go for the high spots. It's a little bit like dry brushing in that respect, but for example, let's say, and make sure you don't have too much on your brush by the way, For example, you see all these big bunched up muscles at the back, you really want to try and highlight them a bit. So if you put a little bit on like the high areas, say the elbows, sorry about the camera, it is only a phone after all. So you're, you're not really painting over it again, like I've mentioned in the previous video, you're really just putting a slightly different colour on top. It's almost a wash, but it's not quite. It's just to give a little bit of contrast, take out the high areas, like I said, and you're just giving it a little bit more variation. So that's what the washes and the paints really help you pick out. They really help you find the differences in the uh, miniature skin. And to be fair, with Fire Slayers especially, they are often not around pretty hot stuff, so, <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun. So really, them having darker skin does kind of make sense. So, it's just a little bit on the top layer. So we're going to wait for that to dry. And I remembered, oops, sorry camera, I remembered that I actually did apply this stuff to the skin on my other models. I also did mix it up a little bit with some of them. You can, of course, go... Hang on, let me see. Where are you? Here we go. You can, of course, use the traditional Reichland Flesh Wash. This is the stuff that you normally put on skin. It just kind of makes it a little bit darker. Uh, this one will make it lighter. Excuse me. This one will make it lighter. But, uh, yeah. I'll have to make up my mind which one I prefer, honestly. How am I going to do this guy? So... I've made up my mind. We are going to go with some flesh wash. Partly because it's nice to have something a little different to show you all, but also because, well, it gives it a bit of contrast. And this is the nice thing about painting. You can mix and match everything. And it will work out pretty well either way. So obviously I let that dry, the uh, Cadian flesh. And once I start washing this, you're going to see...
how the wash will sink into all the deep bits. You see how it's making the lighter bits slightly darker. The darker bits have grown slightly lighter. It just kind of brings it all out a bit more. Now, thing with washes, I tend to find, it's very easy to use too much, but also it's very hard to make sure that it's enough. Because washes are, at the end of the day, they're, they're meant to sink into the recesses. So you do need a decent amount on your brush, but too much, and you end up with a really dark skin. Oop, sorry, brush just hit the camera. Um, so, yeah, you you kind of got to learn to balance that out, which is easier said than done. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. This is a problem when you don't have much of a studio space as of yet. I'm, uh, let's try and, that's better, right. So now we're going on the feet. But hopefully you can see what I mean, and it brings out all the different layers of the skin. Just makes it that little bit more complete. And there you have it. Get rid of some of that from one of the arms. Yeah, so really you just kind of keep applying this stuff until you're happy with the skin tone, and I'm I'm relatively happy with that skin tone personally. Yeah. Relatively happy. So you're going to need to wait for that to completely dry because we are in the final, final stages. And for me, some of the most fun stages, or most frustrating, the eyes. We now have got to start painting some eyes and this is going to be the first time I'm actually quote unquote live trying to paint the damn things. But uh, let's wait for it to dry first. Now for the bit that I've been dreading and I do dread, dread this bit. Although, I'd argue it's also one of the most important stages. The eyes. I'm not gonna lie, I do like dwarf models that uh, have completely closed helmets. Because <laughs> then I don't have to worry about any eyes. Oi. Anyway, well, this is gonna be the first time I'm gonna try and do this live on camera. But essentially, you want a very, a good point. You don't want the paint too thick on the brush. You definitely don't want it too watery because you don't want it going everywhere. That's the last thing you want. So, this could be embarrassing for both of us. Uh, see, that one was a bit better. That one was horrible. Look, a teeny, this is better. That's a better, whoop, that's a better quantity of paint on the brush. Let's try that again. Better. Now I'm going to come back once I've touched that up. So this took me two or three attempts to get this right. You know that thing when I mentioned that I'm no professional painter? Well, I meant it. <laughs> I'm not a professional painter. But that's serviceable. I'm I'm relatively happy with that because at least you can see he's looking at you and that to me is you know part of the point. So I will give that a very 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 light dab of flesh wash. So otherwise his eyes are kind of just popping out at you a little too much. So just enough to Darken that back in. Yeah, so it's not quite as popping out of you as as, uh, as it could be. And I'm going to call that a day for that, because that's, that's pretty damn good. And that's mostly how I paint my Fire Slayer beards. So, from my new little furry <laughs> bearded friend here, 
I just wanted to again say thank you all for your subscriptions and your likes and support. It really does mean a lot to me. And yeah, I will do my best to keep this content coming as much as I can. Uh, everything willing. There we go. Right, thank you all for your support, and I look forward to hearing from you all soon.